Okay, here, Queen 9 suited. This is a um, uh, NL600 uh, game, so this is much higher limit than the ones we've been looking at, just to throw one of those in there. So he raises it, he min raises it from the cutoff, which gives me fantastic odds to make this call. And I do. And flop comes. Straight draw. Open in a straight draw. And the flush draw. So 9 10 jack queen. And the flush draw. So, okay. Third nut, flush draw. And we donk into this guy. So half pot bet into him. And this guy apparently likes min raises and min raises this up. So, again, these min raises you got to be careful of on the flop. But we have such a strong draw and we're getting such good odds right here that we are able to just call it flat which we do four comes so if he had flopped the tens of the jacks uh... we're in real trouble if he had raised with the four five suited for example um, four seven four three also suited some players do uh... we're also in trouble so there's eighty one in the pot and out of position again, you see how much more difficult it is to play this. Uh, if you're over here in this wonderful in position seat, then you can control the pot much, much better. So here on the turn, we opt for a check, and he bets it out. Okay, and again, he's he's given us hella good odds. If he really wanted to take down this pot, he should have put out 60 here for a three-quarter pot bet, and maybe 50. Um, and I'm much more likely to let that go. But again, we have this super, super strong draw. And if he's if he's on a flop set of tens or jacks, you know we're gonna say good hand, but we don't necessarily think that's the case. And we go ahead and call it because again, we are getting basically 3.7 to 1 on our money, and we only need 21% chance of completing here on the river. And again, if we're looking at 15 ounce, uh, which I am, then I'm gonna go ahead and give myself the full 15 here and consider myself at 30 32% equity, which is beyond what I need so I go ahead and call that and the river comes and it's a king now this is a really good card because if he thought we were on the flush draw all this time which was indicative of our play right? he's not necessarily going to put us on queen nine now king did hit so uh, the ace queen is going to have us beat the again the made full house has us of course totally beat and we can get into serious trouble here but, you know, we're not going to be playing this draw line and then punking out on the river. It's entirely two weeks. So, 141 in the middle, and we bet it out. So, this bet will be very indicative of a block bet. Okay, that would be, for example, um, you know, we, we're on Jack King, whatever. Um, worried about the fours. We're on um, ace king and worried about the flop two pair or again the four whatever else um, maybe completed straights for example if we weren't holding this uh, and this would be very indicative of a block bet in this situation so if he were to perceive it as a block bet and as a block bet bluff right then he might raise over the top and that's a really tricky spot right we'd have to really have a few more than 94 hands on the guy to figure that one out but um, you know we could be walking into flushes I'm sorry into uh, full houses uh, a bit and even you know if you were crazy enough uh, if you were playing ace queen that whole way uh, just trying to outplay us in positions also possible uh, in which case of course he has the nut straight and we have the second straight so anyways we make this smallish bet uh, you can be making that as a block bet a lot uh, it's also a value bet and if he comes over the top like I said I mean you got a real question so anyways, we, we make that bet, and he, only, okay, he lets it go. And we take down that pot, playing out of position with a strong draw. Sevens here, and the big blind again, six max. Steel razor, and we whiff hard. So we flop an under pair on a Broadway flop, uh, non-suited. And we check it, he bets it, and we raise it. So we check, raise, bluff on that board which we're going to have hit a lot against that guy and we take it down. Just give you guys ideas of how you can also play uh, in position when you don't hit the boards. I'm sorry, out of position when you don't hit the boards. Check raise bluff into a C better. Here we have our twos and the button uh, and the big blind sorry. 
another steel raise from the button and you don't always have to just call cold from the big blind or the small blind you can also raise up with speculative hands so we do exactly that and raise it up to seven instead of nine or ten which would have been a very standard three bet from the big blind and we get cold cold uh, forgive me he calls our three bet flat and flop comes two two uh, seven seven three okay so that's gonna have missed his uh, broadway kind of steals a lot um, if he's holding a broadway hand um, yeah, uh, small suited connectors, etc. And yeah, any any ace nine hand or better, even like ace eight or better, uh, would have completely missed this hand. So we go ahead and make our C bet in this three bet pot. Um, and yeah, just over just over half pot size here, and he's getting twenty six percent to make that call, and lets it go. So I want to look at two more uh, steel scenarios or scenarios where you're in the blinds and you outplay your opponent out of position different moves you can make there and we want to wrap it up um, with as always our lucky ladies so uh, pair of fives in the big blind uh, again 82 big blinds for some reason I didn't auto buy back in here um, if you are playing the uh, big stack strategy you should of course have that option click to auto rebuy uh, very often back in the day I didn't. Um, so here I'm with fives in the big blind. We got a stealer from the cutoff who's stealing relatively often here at 20%. And I opt for a re raise uh, for three bet from the big blind. And again, you're going to be making a lot of money here. These cutoff and button stealers are going to be letting that go a lot. Uh, even at eight, uh, even when you're only raising it uh, five, five big blinds, and he's got 30% to call it. Um, so he, he does call his cold. And flop comes, and that's a flop I can represent having three bet pre flop. So I represent the ace, bet out half pot, non suited board. I'll be betting half pot a lot on my C bets, and he believes it, and I take it down. Eight jack suited. And again, you know, really poor hand, relatively seen. Uh, another big stacker here raises us up, and we make a proper. Uh, three bet here from the small blind, but this guy have a look. The reason I can do that is he's raising 60%, right? He's raised 40% from the cutoff and 67% from the button in the hands we've seen. So, you know, I'll be re-raising any two a lot here. And so he calls us, and we flop mid pair, and bet half pot, and lo and behold, <laughs> he lets it go. good. So four or five suited yet again. Um, strong, I mean a speculative hand, right, but a decent one, and normally of course you want to be playing these kind of hands in late position with other limpers before you, or we can cold call um, in position again uh, with deep stacks, right, these speculative hands are also, however, very good for re-steals against active 33% stealers uh, from the cutoff or the button, right, so you know exactly where you are on the flop, and you can play on from there and get creative. And I like to resteal with these kind of hands. I like to resteal also with the small pocket pairs that you guys have seen. And not, you know, not only restealing with your monsters, it keeps you yet again unreadable. We get a call and see the flop. So paired boards are going to miss your opponent's hands and yours uh, a lot more. And against one opponent, I think it's upwards of 80% that he'll have missed that. And you know, we did flop the four. <laughs> Why not take a shot? He's going to let it go 33% of the time. As you guys see here, uh, in a 3-bet pot, he's let it go 50% uh, of the time. And so, yeah, we take a shot. Even less than half pot there, and he let it go. So, take down another pot here. Uh, continuing your aggression into, into the flop as the last player to make an aggressive move pre-flop. 10 queen offsuit. 250 here. And we just call. Okay, we just call our Broadway. This would be a good spot for this guy then to make a three bet squeeze against um, a relatively small steel raise amount two and a half times here and one caller in a small blind. It'd be a good spot to go ahead and three bet that with a lot of hands. And so he just calls it. And we flop nothing. And we uh, check it, of course, in real time. It wasn't that quick. <laughs> uh, what should I do? I don't know. 
should I raise my nines or <laughs> should I bet my nines here, my set of nines or or, or not? Or yeah, good. So anyways, we whiff. Right, we think about it and then check. Uh, this guy then checks behind us, and yet again, this is showing you the power of the C bet. I mean, if he bets that, right, I'm gonna let that go. And I, you know, I may I may check raise from time to time and stuff like that, but very often I'm gonna be letting that go. And so he just checks behind, actually. And apparently, you know, they don't want it. And I just hit my ace here, and or I had my nine and was hoping for an opportunity to check raise. And I've got absolutely nothing on this board. But it's a good card to represent, um, it's a good scare card to represent, and you can bluff into that quite often, even against two players out of position, believe it or not. You know, you might have the nine, uh, you might have the ace, definitely. And there you go. Uh, you can also be betting into this flop as well. Let's say, for example, with the ten jack suited, ten jack of hearts, for example. You'll be uh, checking the flop and then betting out when you do flop that nine. Um, you know, there's just a lot of stuff here that you can represent, and as long as you're betting similar amounts um, with various hands and different ranges, then uh, you're keeping your play completely unreadable, and that's the way to be. So, uh, small pot, small hands, and I take a stab at it. Why not? A little less than half pot, and sure enough, you know, two guys that showed weakness post flop, you know, really small, small size steel bet. Uh, this guy just kind of limps in after the fact, you know. Okay, over calls. Check, check. Ace hits. Let's see if anybody has it. Um, you know, I'm representing the ace of the nine, and they let it go.